Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening. Um, so I do not want to waste our time. So let me just get started right away. Um, so before that, can I just check whether all of you are comfortable with English or you prefer uh, BM? Can I just uh, see a show of hands? If you, those of you who have your video on, you can put up your hand or if you are uh, not showing your video, you can just uh, put a thumbs up if you prefer English. Okay, so uh, not everyone. So maybe I will do both English and Malay. Okay. Uh, at any time, if you have, if you have any questions, uh, as Danish said, feel free to ask, and um, I will try and assist you. So, I'm going to start off with the polling process under the pandemic era. So, uh, some of you may already have a uh, Pacha experience, you know, in the, the previous uh, elections and all that. Um, but this is now the new process which uh, all Pachas should be aware of. So, first of all, when the voters come in, they need to sanitize their hands. So, uh, there are actually several uh, processes, several times that the voters will need to have their hands sanitized in this new uh, pandemic era. Basically, at the Kema, uh, Kema Saringan, Pusat Mengundi. Uh, so at the main entrance, Bila Maso, uh, Pintu Maso, the gate, uh, let's say if it's a school, if it's a hall, they will also have uh, sanitizers. And then uh, Pintu Maso Saloran, which is the classrooms. And after the voter uh, gets their, the finger uh, dipped into the ink, there is also another step of that and after voting the pintu keluar berpusat mengundi okay i will go into a little bit more detail uh, shortly so basically at the saloran before you enter the saloran classroom or hall you need to scan your mice jatra and those who don't have the mice jatra you will there will be a book uh, for you to write just as, you know, I think all of us are pretty familiar with that before we enter any establishments right now uh, to makan or to go to uh, shopping malls and all that. So we have this. And then before you enter the room, there is a hand sanitizer. So the, there is a police officer who will be there and he will be the one to assist you. Okay. So after this, next section will be when you enter, you will come to KP1. So the process is basically uh, the KP1 will request for the my card or IC or uh, any identification, um, your uh, driver's license, passport. Um, for those who lost yeah, any of these, the IC, there is also the, um, you know, you make a police report, there is another, um, there is a temporary one issued by JPN and all that. So, um, so these are all accepted. Okay. The K1 will also request uh, for the voter to remove the mask. Okay. Uh, to verify ini uh, untuk tengoklah muka sama ada sama dengan my card. Okay. And then KP1 will um, pass the my card to KP2. All right, so um, as you can see from the fourth point here, reads from Dr. Penile. Uh, some of you may have uh, uh, gone through training and, you know, um, maybe the trainer informed you that the KP1 needs to read from the IC. Okay, so the process is different right now. 
the KP1 will pass the my card to KP2 and he or she will read from Daftar Pamile. Okay. At the same time, KP2 will cross-check what KP1 is reading from the my card is correct. Okay. And then he or she will pass the my card back to the voter and request for the voter's left index finger to dip into the indelible, indelible ink. So once KP3 sees this, the she or he will, will uh, stamp the ballot paper. So the KP does not stamp the uh, paper until and unless he or she sees that KP2 has, um, the, the voter's finger has been dipped in the ink. Okay, so this is uh, important. So the KP3 will fold the paper, the ballot paper, before um, handing it to the voter. This is where the sanitizing comes. Um, the, they are advised to, uh, as much as possible, um, you know, the KP should sanitize the voter's right hand where possible because uh, in most circumstances, unless uh, any issue, you know, like if the voter does not have uh, fingers on the left hand, then it will be the ones on the right. So the sanitizer is not for washing away the ink, and, um, but it is actually before you get the, ink, uh, the ballot paper. Okay, this is one of the new processes. Okay. And um, the other thing is, um, we are also informed that the KPs are not supposed to talk to the voters. Um, in this new era, it is um, impossible for the KPs not to talk to the voters. So for Pachas, you need to observe what they say to the voters. Um, in this circumstance, as you can see, all three KPs have to talk to the voters because number one, you need to ask the voter to remove the mask, ask for the IC. Number two, needs to request for the finger, for the ink. And number three, needs to uh, inform the voter that you need to sanitize your hand before I can give you the ballot paper as well as also to ensure that the voter goes to the pick-up pick up mengundi to, uh, and use the pen provided. Uh, in a little while, I will also cover uh, what goes on in Saloran 1, which is where we have the, uh, the older um, voters as well as the OKU. So I will explain a little bit more over there uh, about that process. Okay. But the voter sometimes does need to talk to the KPs. So, um, so we do not just banta every time the uh, KPs talk to the voters. Okay. So we also have KP4 who previously used to just stand next to the ballot box. Okay, for those of you who have either observed before, you have voted before, you've seen this, uh, you know, KP with the ruler and standing next to the box and, you know, pushing in the ballot papers and all. So that is, uh, that used to be the only role of KP4, but now, as you can see, they have a lot more work to do. So basically, they also assist the voters uh, in case KP3 is uh, busy to ensure that voters pergi petak mengundi yang betul and places the ballot box in the correct box. So in this case, because uh, for Sarawak, it's just the uh, dun, so there's only one box, so that's no issue there. And um, also KP4 uh, and assist the voters, uh, OKU or those on, on the wheelchairs to also um, you know, wheel them in from the outside as well as also to, uh, to the ballot, uh, the box, and also the voting petak mengundi. Okay. 
at the same time, the KP4 also goes out to check to ensure that all the voters have scanned the Mysore Jatra. And KP4 is also the replacement for KP1, KP2, 3 uh, when they go for break. Right. So apart from that, um, of course, we have the KTM. Now the KTM, basically, as you know, they will oversee all matters. And uh, anytime that Pachas have any questions, you know, ada soalan, ada bantahan, uh, you are to address to the KTM and not to the KPs. Okay. So this point I want to uh, make is that, you know, uh, you need to understand that most of these KPs, they, or even the KTMs, they are actually government servants like teachers, school administrators. So from the schools that uh, the Saloran, the, the voting centers, um, they are not your enemy, <laughs> all right? So um, sometimes we don't want to all just, you know, find the faults with these KPs, although yes, we want to be vigilant to ensure that uh, they are doing the process correctly. And that is why we are explaining to you what the process is. So uh, it's also important uh, that you understand what each of these roles are. And um, sometimes if they do certain things, it's not necessarily because they are cheating, but uh, sometimes it could also be that they may not necessarily be well trained to do this roles, yeah. So this ends the first part of my um, sharing. The next part, okay, I will not be sharing slides. Okay. So I want to explain to you the process of um, what goes on in Saloran 1. Okay? As I mentioned to you, Saloran 1 is for the, um, the older, the elderly, as well as for the OKU. Now, um, recently they have actually uh, revised the, the uh, electoral role in the sense that OKUs are now in Saloran 1. So if you look at the Dafta Pamile, the from number one onwards, from starting from one, it's not the oldest person. Starting from number one is actually the OKUs. So do not be alarmed if you see like uh, someone who is born in 1990, you know, in your Saloran 1. Uh, 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 also, sometimes we do not want to judge whether these people should look like OKU because sometimes they do have other issues and um, the important thing for Pachas to note is that, uh, you know, that if you do want to check to ensure that, uh, you know, this is the right voter, you can always uh, raise your hand to request the KTM for clarification. Yeah, so that's one. Now, um, you will also find people coming in to the Saloran 1 who are what we call PAPM. In short, it's a PAPM. It actually stands for uh, Penunjuk Arah Pusat Mengundi. So these people are stationed at the KEMA outside. So when we have any OKUs or uh, elderly who, requests, who requires a wheelchair, they will be the ones who will bring them in. So they will, depending on the, um, the voter, um, basically voters who are in wheelchairs, they might come with their family members, but the family members are not allowed to come into the Saloran. Uh, they have a waiting area. For Saloran one, there is a special tempat uh, menunggu. So they have chairs for the uh, family members to wait for the voters. So these PAPM problems are will be the ones who will push the uh, the people, the voters in the wheelchair. They will go from station to station. 
from one to two, three, and then to the Petak Mungundi, and after that, back out. Yeah. So besides the uh, Papam, they also have the, as I mentioned earlier, the role of KP4 now will also assist the voters who are in wheelchairs to actually bring them in. Okay. So besides this, the KTM can also assist the elderly voters or uh, OKUs who are unable to read the ballot papers. Now, um, you will be wondering about the Borang 10 for those who have already attended the training and you know what Borang 10 is. Basically, if these people require assistance from someone um, to, uh, basically, they call it Orang Yang Di Puchaya I, your, uh, someone that you trust to help you to vote uh, to, to, on the ballot paper. This does not necessarily have to be an, uh, the Orang Yang Di Puchaya I, someone from outside. The KTM can also assist. Okay, uh, so in some instances where the KTM does that, then um, they they will be the ones to fill up the Borang Ten on the behalf. But um, this does not necessarily always happen because the KTM for Saloran One is a very busy person. Okay, because he or she will be going to ensure that the voters, uh, especially the elderly, they may not be able to read what is on the ballot paper. They can assist them to read out the names of the candidates and uh, the sequence to these uh, voters. Okay. So Salohran 1, if you do uh, get stationed there, you, you do need to take note. It's a special Salohran which uh, does not... Um, like uh, the roles of the, the polling staff may alter a little bit in that sense. Okay. So um, now, when should the uh, Borang Ten not be used? So this is one thing that uh, as Pacha uh, to take note, okay. Kalau pengundi, warga emas tidak mengalami masalah penglihatan. So if this person can read, uh, who even though he or she may not be able to read very clearly, and that's where KTM comes in to assist to read that for them. Okay, that is number one. They cannot, uh, they, they cannot require an orang yang dipercayai and borang ten uh, tidak boleh diisukan. Okay, number two, Pengundi yang mengalami kesukaran fizikal tetapi mampu mengundi sendiri. Now, uh, saluran one, you have, uh, there may be voters who uh, may experience some, you know, difficulties, their hands may be shaking and all that, but that does not mean that they cannot vote. They can. Okay. And number three, pengundi datang berkerusi roda, tetapi mampu mengundi dengan sendiri. You, Saroran one, you will find a lot of them in this situation. Um, you know, maybe half of the voters who come in will be in wheelchairs. They do not need to have orang yang dipercaya i and borang ten does not need to be issued. Okay. Uh, I think I will stop here for now. Thank you very much, Mary. So I hope everyone knows one aspect, the polling process, especially under the pandemic era, especially please take note of the, when the sanitizing liquid is being administered. You know, as Pachas, you need to observe this, particularly also reading the IC from the electoral roll. So please take note those who have the older knowledge, it's reading from the IC, okay? So this is something that you need to be aware of. Uh, then also uh, the other aspect, Borang Ten, because right now the definition of Orang Yang Dipercaya is very loose. I mean, you must be a Malaysian citizen or the age of 21 and about, I mean, over 21. That's it, you know, you can employ the same Orang Yang Dipercaya multiple times. So this is where the abuse can come into play. But as Mary clearly pointed out, there are circumstances whereby the 
the qualification of orang yang dipercaya cannot be used. You know, you can't. Yes, Mary has outlined those three. So, as pachas, please take note of this because you are the front line to stop any abuse. Without much further ado, I would like to pass the time to Gikyang to continue on the topic of other matters, uh, but related to polling, but importantly about on the counting part. So, over to you, Gikyang. Okay, good evening. Uh, how do I go in on the sharing side? Press right show. The slideshow on the PowerPoint. The slideshow. Uh, yeah, file okay. for insert, draw, design, transitions, animation, slideshow. You're supposed to give me the sharing. Uh, have you allowed me to do the sharing? You should be allowed. You, huh? you should be allowed. We, we can see your slides. We can see your slides. All of us can That's see. You ready? Okay. Can see the slide? Yes. All right. Okay. I, uh, Mary have shared the uh, briefing. Mary have shared uh, most of the uh, processes about Pacha. So I will go straight to areas of handling suspicious voters. Uh, during voting time, uh, especially in Smalanjong, uh, we were uh, able to identify the person who just walked in, uh, whether you want to uh, look at them as uh, uh, according to what uh, the, the Krani have actually uh, named them out. So normally, uh, we can identify it quite easily. How by, however, when we talk about uh, in Sabah and Sarawak, uh, it may be a, quite a challenge because I think uh, for us from Semenanjung to identify uh, the different ethnic group, uh, it may be a challenge. So, however, my uh, last two elections in uh, Sabah and Sarawak, we are assisted by the local. So, I believe that uh, when we go into our areas as a volunteers, uh, I believe that uh, we should be able to be uh, uh, assisted by the locals who give us uh, a lot of uh, tips and guide. So we should not be afraid of how to uh, able to do our volunteer works. So when we talk about uh, them, sometimes we may ask who are them. They may be a foreigners, they may be a, a local different ethnic group that we cannot identify. But all this can be uh, uh, also uh, coming into the area is, for example, uh, they are not in the list is because uh, they just walk in and uh, they claim they want to assist someone in a wheelchair. So, of course, someone in a wheelchair, you need uh, to be carried in uh, to the uh, Saloran area. Uh, definitely, uh, people like uh, them who are willing to help and they may be actually a volunteers uh, uh, from the outside area. However, in the polling station, uh, when these people come in, it's like Mary also say, if they become uh, not uh, uh, suspicious or whatever, uh, end up they need to fill up some form. So those who also claim that they want to assist the age or the weak, uh, uh, in the sense that uh, uh, they are walking very slowly or they are uh, like uh, not walking very stable. My experience also, one of them is that he looked like uh, he's not stable in walking. Uh, in, uh, that he's willing to uh, assist by someone. And of course, sometimes some of these people who come in, they are uh, uh, being assisted by someone is because they are just claim to be a uh, stroke patient. So this definitely, we understand the needs uh, of uh, 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 the people who come in. And of course, those who are uh, claim to be just uh, after surgery uh, in a recovering stage. So for this type of situations, uh, or uh, we can, as a Pacha, we should take note that actually uh, the uh, KP4 or the Karani number four 
who are able to assist. Actually, he's the only one standing and walking around. So, so during the uh, uh, polling process, uh, the KT4 actually can, but normally even the KTM actually first to come over to offer help or to ask. If not, then they were uh, in an area of uh, very suspicious and we, we should not let them walk in and, and also even go claim to be assisting the person who are, uh, are weak and to be stand beside uh, the, the place where they want to cast the vote. So these are something uh, as a Pacha volunteer, we should uh, take note on uh, people like them. And of course, kita boleh memanta, uh, means we can protest to say that, you know, uh, this is not correct, uh, this is not in the leaves, and uh, we know there is a need, why can't the KP4 or the KTM uh, assist? So I think this is to avoid uh, or to, to look into how to handle these suspicious uh, people who want to come in uh, to do the voting. So basically, uh, during our role as a Pacha, uh, these are things that we need to watch out because uh, a lot of time it is true, if someone is in a wheelchair, he needs to be assisted. Uh, or, or when he's walking in a very, uh, very uh, not stable way, uh, definitely you need someone to assist to walk. However, this can be overcome, you know, uh, with the assist from the KP4 or the KTM. Because by, by the time uh, 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 they, they came in, uh, it is always unprepared. But not like Mary side, it's always in Saroran 1 or the streamline number 1. But here sometimes we may have a few cases where they just walk in or attend. Huh? Maybe in the remote area, it is more, uh, uh, how do I say, more uh, cases. So we as a volunteers, we should be able to uh, identify this. So I also uh, being told that uh, uh, go into the area of uh, talking about counting uh, the process. So I would say that all Pacha are a volunteer can actually opt to come in within your area or you forego the place where you're supposed to vote. Like for example, my last two elections, uh, I never vote in uh, Subang Jaya anymore because I'm in Sabah and one is in, in Sarawak. So uh, as a volunteers in your own area, actually you can have an option that, for example, you can come in as a polling agent in the early morning. And of course, according to the APTA, it's minimum two hours. You can stretch to four hours, then you go for lunch. Then during your lunch time, you can uh, uh, go to do your voting. So hopefully the voting is within your area. So try to, uh, when you do the volunteer, try to discuss this in terms of logistics. Like for example, I give myself an uh, example. My first uh, uh, voting is that uh, my voting area is in USJ. But my uh, this uh, polling uh, pacha uh, volunteer work was in Subang Jaya, so that is about ten to fifteen minutes. So actually, within one hour, uh, I'm done and I can come back to the center and uh, opt to go in and can be replaced back again. So of course, uh, ideally, each saloran we should have two uh, pacha volunteer if possible. But sometimes. In a remote area like uh, Sabah and Sarawak, I think it's not easy. Okay, so let's hope uh, that uh, more will be spread out the world. Uh, the words that you know more can uh, volunteer to assist those people in the East Malaysia uh, for the voting. So, on the other hand, is that the other options uh, you can do is that. Uh, after the, the, the morning voting, you go in the afternoon as a, a polling agent, and you can continue on until the polling is closed, then you become the counting agent. Because during the, the, the counting uh, of the process, uh, the Pacha volunteer is very important to like assist, uh, to ensure the voting numbers uh, that is for which Chalon uh, is uh, uh, counted properly and also if there's any ragu or maybe doubts of uh, the vote in terms of paper, in terms of all this, this is, will be a detailed training that to make sure this will be recorded. Okay, so, so the, the volume, uh, 
uh, uh, the pacha volunteer also must ensure to be very punctual because a lot of times when the polling a uh, ballot sorry the ballot box I, I i i didn't spell properly so the ballot box is being opened at the time it must be the present yourself uh, should be there before being cut by uh, the, the, the KTM. So we, as a Pacha volunteer, we must ensure this. Then it was be sealed back because when they open up the box, they will take out certain documents. Uh, then after that, leave the whole uh, box uh, uh, considered empty and we seal back again. Of course, again, the sealing process, this is something that we can also learn how to identify as a Pacha volunteer. So this is important because in terms of uh, this area, uh, uh, if it's not sealed properly, I will use the word, uh, it can be actually uh, open and put back again and you know, uh, many things will happen. So this is important. So your present, your, uh, how to say, your punctuality to be present at the time when the ballot box is uh, uh, arrived at the center, you should be there, you know? And also the, the, the end of the polling, uh, sorry, end of the casting vote, the pacha must be around uh, when the box is being opened for the, uh, the, the counting process. This is important uh, when we talk about uh, this ensure of the pacha volunteer responsibility. And don't be worried as a pacha, you got the right to query if there is any doubts. Okay, so that's why there's a big word called ragu. Huh? So when you have doubt, you, you got the right to ask, and uh, of course, KTM got the right to say no or whatever, but you can actually record this down. So because anything that you can see in the voting paper, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's important that you have to actually uh, raise up. You can even memanta, but of course, the final decision is still the KTM, you know? Then finally, is at the end of the process counting, most important document is that all volunteers, so sometimes it depends on during the voting time, it depends the how many chalons are competing in that area. It may be three, it may be four. I think some area in Sarawak, I was told maybe seven, you know. So, I mean, filling up form will very huhara, you know. But each one must make sure you get a copy signed by the KTM. Of course, if possible, witnessed by the others, Pacha. That, for example, if there's three, three of you all must sign in of each other's uh, uh, document and followed by the KTM, then you, can, you must take this copy. So the counting process will not be end correctly if you don't have a copy of Form 14 yourself. Because then the ballot box will be sealed and closed and they will bring to the center. So along the way, this is something uh, during the counting process, this is the most important document is it must be tallied. Okay, so this is uh, 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 on the area of uh, uh, the counting that I'm uh, assigned uh, to share. So I will pass the time now uh, back to uh, Tanish.